Good morning, everyone. It's Fiona here with Core Confidence. Kate's flying to Melbourne this morning, so I'm flying solo. Welcome, and as you know, this month we've been talking a lot about mindfulness and a lot about how we can get in touch, how we can have um, a real sense of presence, whatever we're doing. And, and the words that are often used around this is executive presence. How can we get more in touch uh, with our core confidence, which will enable us to show up in a way that really gives people that sense that we know who we are um, in our workplace and we know what we want to share and we're confident and clear in that. And that's often termed executive presence. So today I thought we'd spend a little bit of time thinking about what replenishes our energy, how to have that you know, healthful mind, healthful body, and what that might look like for us. And you know, we're in the book, we explore this a little bit, but it's also something that Kate and I do regularly in our own lives. And so we're, we're always experimenting, we're always thinking about, we're trying to find new ways. How do we better enhance our performance, um, our vitality, making sure that we're you know, looking after ourselves in, in lots of different ways. So um, in terms of that, I thought we'd speak about physical health and sleep and how that might affect health at work and what, what all of that looks like together. So the reason that uh, we, we think this is so important is that when we take when we pay attention and we take care to our body and what's going on, it really fuels us in other areas of our life. And the more we can get attuned to, okay, uh, this is what works well for me, this is what doesn't, it really feeds in to that whole thing that we talk about, you know, being, uh, being able to rely on our intuition, being able to access our multiple intelligences, knowing that we can really source data from lots of different places and that it's really valuable. So one of the things that we've learned around physical health is that what we eat and how we eat and how often and that sort of thing is really, really important. And one of the, the areas of um, science that is most um, exciting at the moment is this real deep investigation into the gut biome and inflammation and what that might be doing to people and what it might be, what effects it might be having for any of us. And that's one of the reasons that we think it's you know, such an important piece to be conscious of what you're eating and to be conscious of, of you know, what you're using as fuel for your body because that's effectively what we do when we choose the food we eat. And it's one of the reasons that we also think detox is you what know, works really well for us. We do that a couple of times a year just to give our body a little bit of a rest, a little bit of a time to slow down, to um, appreciate, to reset a little bit around um, food and around what we're consuming and taking the time out to explore what our relationship with food is in a more um, conscious and enlightened way. The other areas that can really uh, support this healthy mind, healthy body piece is the way that we think about exercise. So, you know, for most of us, exercise is something that, um, you know, we, we attend to some of the time. It's not always a consistent practice. I can certainly put my hand up and say, you know, there've been times in my life when I've been a lot more disciplined around exercise, but I have found um, over the last 10 years that making sure I get some exercise every day is really vital. So even if that's just a walk, even if it's a relatively short walk, but just being outside, being in nature, we know that also really replenishes um, us. It really, it really supports us in this uh, quest we have to get more aligned and more integrated. So making sure that you know, some time is spent. And for everyone, what we've also found is that exercise is find something that you enjoy doing. So you know, if it's if it feels onerous, we tend not to do it, and we'll always make an excuse. So one of the ways is to find something that you actually enjoy. So I've got friends who do regular dance classes. That really energizes them. They love that. Um, other people do you know, more of a dance exercise thing like Zumba. Um, I've also got a lot of friends and I do yoga. Uh, yoga for me is one of the best forms of exercise. The reason I particularly like yoga is because it's a real mind, body, spirit integration piece. There's breath work, there's the asanas, there's the practice 
and there's um, there's this lovely spiritual meditation piece that that sits there as well. So for me, that's a really good thing. But it's all it is this piece. Find out what works for you and explore that. And in thinking about that, you know, if for whatever reason you find exercise really reason quite challenging, one of the cool things to do is to find a buddy and make a commitment with them. And we talk about this a little bit in the book that. It's, you know, once you make a commitment to someone else and you have to show up, then you're more likely to do it. And that's one of the reasons I'm part of a personal training group because, you know, we're committed. We, we rock up regularly, we do that, and that means that we are getting a certain amount of exercise and it's also really targeted. It's helpful, it's useful to strength build, building and that sort of thing. So make sure you're getting the right food for your body, that you're exercising, and the other big one that is really crucial to healthy body, healthy mind, healthy mind is sleep. And sleep has been an ongoing challenge for me. I'm a, a great researcher in this area. I think I have probably tried literally hundreds of different methodologies and supports and ways to enhance and support me in sleep. Um, I, you know, I, I've always been a little bit, had some issues around sleep, but it's changed. I found once I had kids and then there was all the getting up at night and that sort of thing, it really seemed to throw me out for a very long time. And even though they were finally getting to sleep, I still wasn't. So that's when I did more and more research. And I think, you know, part of this is how much exercise you get. So the exercise enhances the sleep. Part of it's your physical health. So not having too much inflammation means it enhances your sleep. Um, making sure that you do things in a certain kind of routine. So what we know about is what they call sleep hygiene. Um, and that's a, a funny term, which is really around how are you setting yourself up to sleep well each and every night? So having a certain routine about the time that you start getting ready for bed, that you don't drink uh, stimulating drinks or too much alcohol too close to sleeping, that um, you don't watch screens a lot in that last half an hour or 45 minutes before you want to go to sleep. That you, you know, maybe have one or two little rituals that you have a, a night, uh, a herbal tea that you enjoy, um, that you possibly put a mask on your face or you just do a little bit of meditation. You do something that winds down, that gets you in the zone so that you can be in the right frame for drifting into a, a really beautiful and effort, effortless sleep. If you do happen to be someone that wakes up at night and finds it difficult to get back to sleep, well, there are, again, a lot of um, strategies you can use to deal with that. And one of the things is to just um, not get agitated. Um, I know for a long time I would get really worried about oh gosh, you know, I haven't um, haven't had enough sleep um, and now I'm going to get up on the early in the morning and oh my goodness and that sort of thing. And I've really learned that that doesn't help at all. So I just keep myself calm. I keep, um, I make sure that I don't get um, agitated about the fact that I haven't had sleep. And I can do a full body scan, so a type of meditation, or I can actually um, plug my headphones in and listen to a guided meditation from one of the meditation apps. Um, or I can just do my own kind of closed eyes, silent meditation. And I think what we find with all of these um, techniques is that the aim is to just be present with yourself. So it's all, it's like a virtuous circle really. The more we can focus on that piece of, you know, being present, being clear and calm, the easier it is to, to get the sleep we want and also attend to all the aspects of our physical fitness. So one of, you know, core confidence draws from a lot of different areas, but one of the things we've, we have wanted to share with you, some of the things that we do, and some of the things that we've noticed works for other clients and people we coach. And I think, you know, if you're noticing that you um, are resistant to, or, you know, you find it difficult to do the things that support your body, um, just don't, don't be harsh with yourself, don't judge it, just kind of go, oh yeah, okay, well I recognize that. And just see what you can do to just move the dial a little bit. Be gentle and just, you know, you know, um, just see if there's one or two little things you can do that make it that much easier to support your body, to support your mind, to be in the space where you can um, really show up with all of who you are and be clear and have that good connection with your core confidence, 
know what it is that you're, you stand for and how you want to communicate that to others. So that's all we've got today. Um, what I would like to say is if you haven't got onto the uh, Core Confidence website, www.coreconfidence.com.au, you can download a free chapter anytime. You can also join us um, in the Facebook group and you can buy the book online. We'd love you to share the video and we'd love to hear more from you about what you know what's working for you uh, any questions you have around core confidence um, we'll be happy to answer those either directly or in the facebook live um, and we look forward to uh, engaging with you again soon bye